You're watching News 12 on your side. From the station that's on your side, News 12, first at 5, continues. Our top story live at 5, a student is sent to the hospital after a shooting at Josie High School today. Students evacuated as parents raced up to the school to meet their kids. A lot of nervous people today. The suspect, who Sheriff Richard Roundtree says is a student, is still not in custody as we speak. Now, all of this happening just after 11 this morning. The sheriff says two students got into an argument before they got the call that shots were fired. Now, they responded to an active shooter situation. The sheriff says the suspect is known to the school and to other students. Now, he is asking that student or whoever they may be with tonight to help get him into custody. Again, the victim has non-life-threatening injuries. In our Nick Hillen live now at Josie High, and Nick, parents have told us today was a very traumatic experience for them. What other ways are they describing how this all unfolded? Yeah, well, Meredith, Richmond County Sheriff Richard Roundtree says that everyone followed protocol and it was not chaotic, but parents, well, they're picking up their kids, were telling us that it was chaotic. And you can see video here of students going from the front of the school back to the football field outside. Jasmine Burley's niece wasn't one of those students, though. Burley says her niece was still in the school, and it took an hour and a half to find her student. She says that there was confusion with the evacuation, being told to go to the football stadium and then into the gym. After all the stress of waiting, she says she was finally reunited with her niece. But a lot of people were irate, so I understood that. It's hot, so I just decided to stand off to the side. And when I was able to talk to somebody, they told me what had happened with my nephew, and they got him out to me. So that was a good thing. Yeah, and what happened today could carry into tomorrow. A lot of parents were telling me that their student does not feel safe going back to the classroom. And the superintendent of Richmond County is, is still debating on whether we will have school here tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Nick. Our I-team spent today digging into data surrounding school violence in our area. Of course, we will break down what we learned. Yeah, Josie High School has been in the spotlight before the shooting reminds us of September 17th of last year in the middle of football season. Josie High was having their homecoming celebration over the weekend that many of you may have been at. Two people were injured in that shooting on school grounds. A 19-year-old and an 18-year-old were arrested later that same month. Now we have a shooting inside the school this time. Now the I-team looked at data we collected from the Richmond County school system. Over the past few years, there's been at least 10 incidents at Josie High School that we know about. That was anything from stun guns being found, to threats being texted, and now firearms being used on campus. The National Center of Education Statistics shows school shootings in every level from elementary, middle to high school like we saw today have increased from 2001 to 2022. Now numbers from the Richmond County School System in 2021 to 2022, the latest information that we have is that there were more than 1,600 incidents of fighting, more than 2,700 disorderly conduct cases, 25 knives located, and 60 other weapons found on school campuses. Now coming up, our I-team is continuing to work on this for you and bring you live updates. We'll have more on how school violence data is tracked or not. All right, thank you for that. Well, what this November's mayoral election, so basically they will win the office of mayor. Well, South Carolina leaders say a new state law will help them strengthen families and keep more teachers in the classroom. Yeah, and it comes at a time when the state's teacher shortage is only getting worse year after year. Our state house reporter Mary Green has the details from Rock Hill. Last year, here at Rock Hill Schools, they implemented a pilot program for teachers, offering them up to six weeks of paid leave when they welcome a new child into their family. Leaders say it was a success, with more than 30 families tapping into this. Now, starting with this new school year, this will be guaranteed to every public school teacher in South Carolina. On Wednesday at South Point High School in Rock Hill, Governor Henry McMaster held a bill signing ceremony to mark the new law to provide six weeks of paid leave for state employees who give birth and for those who are the primary caregivers for adopted children. 
parents who don't give birth, who adopt but aren't the primary caregiver, and who foster can get two weeks. School employees can take this time within 12 months of the birth, adoption, or foster, so they'll still be guaranteed their full paid leave if that happens over summer break. Parents who take paid leave won't have that time off count against the time they need to work to reach their next step on the teacher pay scale. It is one beautiful step in the right direction to providing parents the time that is needed to welcome a new person into their lives and provide for them in their most vulnerable moments. Now, the state did not allocate any money specifically for districts to implement this new law. State leaders point out that every district across South Carolina got more money in this new state budget than they did last year and say they feel confident schools should have enough to cover any new costs. Reporting in Rock Hill, I'm Mary Green. This new law builds on another one the legislature passed last year that guarantees paid family leave to all state employees. On this day in history, we lost the king of rock and roll. Coming up, how one woman is making sure his life continues to be celebrated. Riley? And temperatures have cooled off a little bit today, but we got morning temperatures in the 60s heading our way. We'll have a look at that in the full forecast next. Time and back <laughs> Breaking news just into our newsroom. Following the shooting today at Josie High School, the Richmond County School District says there will be no class tomorrow or Friday. Again, that's no class tomorrow or Friday for Josie High School, Murphy Middle School, and Marion E. Barnes Career Center. Again, no school for those three tomorrow or Friday due to the shooting. Teachers will go back Friday, and normal operations will resume on Monday. We'll take a live look now at see much of it over the next seven. We're going to be mostly dry through the weekend for those outdoor plans. All right, thanks, Riley. On this day, 46 years ago, Elvis Presley died. Every year on this day, thousands gather to celebrate his life. And right here at home, one woman has to be one of the late singer's biggest fans. Our Will Volk shows us how she honored the king of rock and roll. It's been 46 years, and he will never be forgotten. Laura Tenney is making sure of that. She has hundreds, if not thousands, of Elvis things in her house. He's the greatest entertainer that ever lived. He was so generous and so humble. Every year, thousands gather at Graceland on the anniversary of Elvis's death to celebrate his life. Today, Tenney's friends are gathering here. Since we didn't get to go to Memphis, we're going to celebrate his life here. They showed up in their Elvis shirts. Tenny lit an Elvis-themed candle and then served food Elvis would eat. I have Elvis's cookbook, and uh, I looked to see what his favorite foods were. And uh, he loved blueberry muffins and banana pudding, so I made that. And, of course, it wouldn't be a celebration of Elvis without watching him perform. When he sang that, people went, wow. All these years later, Tenny and her friends are still moved by him. In the Elvis movie, he told Priscilla, he said, I will be forgotten. He's wrong. He will never be forgotten. In heaven, we'll vote on his side. Tinny says her Elvis collection just keeps on growing, mostly through gifts. We're back in a bit. First of all, we Ashley. A new feature for iPhones makes calling 911 possible by using satellites hundreds of miles above us. It's already saved the lives of hikers, accident victims, and more recently, victims caught in Hawaii's wildfires. Yeah, and our consumer tech reporter, Jamie Tucker, shows us how that works. There are many different ways you can contact 911 from a smartphone. This is for when there are no cell towers around or when they're all down. Here's how to set it up. When you try to call 911 and the call doesn't go through because there are no cell towers, the iPhone 14 will tell you to start a satellite connection to contact emergency services. Apple has a demo on this page. You'll be asked to give the phone's compass permission to see your exact location. The phone will search the sky for a satellite and make the connection to 911. You'll receive text messages asking for what happened and an approximate location. If someone is injured, text messages will offer help on how to treat them until help arrives. 
In addition to sending location information and details to first responders, Apple's emergency service will automatically contact your emergency contacts, provided you've set it up. To do that, go into the Help app settings and Medical ID. Add emergency contacts and their phone numbers. While you're at it, enter any medical conditions and medications. This helps responders quickly gather essential information if you're unable to respond. And this only works on iPhone 14 and future iPhones and iOS 16 and later. And if you haven't already done it, set up your emergency contacts in settings. That way, if something happens to you and you need help, you can notify your family and friends with just a click of a button. That's What the Tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. College football season right around the corner, and there's a great deal of optimism surrounding South Carolina this year. Yes, Ronald. there is. You take it away, Gamecock. <laughs> well, with the Gamecocks, <laughs> receiving the second... <laughs> Breaking news live at 5, a joint operation leading to six search warrants executed at massage parlors in North Augusta. Police there say SLED, Homeland Security Investigations, Aiken County, and Aiken City agencies executed these warrants. Officials say there will be a joint news release tomorrow morning with much more information. We're back in a bit. All right, what do we got? Looks like 64 yards to the pin. Top 64 mile per hour wind? Dude, there's no wind. Head my 64 degree wedge. What's in with you at 64? Are you 64? Dot com! From the station that's on your side, breaking news. A student shot at Josie High School. Like in the national narrative, this is the worst nightmare for parents. Parents and students scramble as deputies search for the suspect. As they're coming out, I'm grabbing my safety. Now a major concern for parents. I don't just feel safe just letting them come to school anymore. Police shooting 24 hours after a brawl at Butler High School, where a school principal was hit in the face. Oh, in just the first three weeks of school, a shooting, lockdowns, and fights in Richmond, Burke, and Aiken County schools. And we have breaking news in the last half hour. Richmond County Schools deciding school will be closed for students for the rest of the week at Josie High, Murphy Middle, and the Marion Barnes Career Center. Teachers will be back in the classroom on Friday, but all of this stemming from today's shooting at Josie High School. Right. The school district says they want everyone to have time to recover from what happened here this morning. No decision yet about Friday night's football games. We'll let you know when that decision comes down. But when students head back Monday, counselors will be there available for students and faculty to address any emotional support needs. That suspected shooter still on the loose this evening as we speak. All this happening just after 11 this morning in the cafeteria area of Josie. Our calls started coming in from the 911 dispatch center and our newsroom about shots fired there. Investigators say two students got into an argument that turned into gunfire. A bullet hitting one of those students in the fingers. Our News 12 drone spotting students being escorted out of the school building. Others waiting there for their parents to take them home. Sheriff Richard Roundtree saying earlier today he's just thankful the shooting was not deadly. And it's 12's live team coverage starts right now. We have Nick Veland who spoke with parents today. Plus our I-teams Will Rio standing by in the studio digging into past incidents at the school. But first we want to send things over to Craig Allison who's breaking down exactly what happened today, what officials are saying about it. He's live for us at the Board of Education where leaders held a news conference in just the last few hours. Craig, what can you tell us? That's right, y'all. All leaders from Sheriff Roundtree, the superintendent, even Mayor Johnson have now all responded to today's shooting. Now, while they all ensure all the precautions were taken today to make sure that no one was killed in today's incident, there's still a lot of questions in the air about how they're going to move forward from today's incident. Along the edge, on the side of parental reassurance, were questions about metal detectors. Superintendent Bradshaw says it's a conversation the Richmond County school system is having, but that none are installed and made no promises for the future. Continuing that, today's shooting may not have been prevented even with a metal detector in place. But right now, Sheriff Roundtree says the male shooter is still out in the community. He has a local tie. Um, we were having searched all residents um, that we know known to this subject. That's why I, I put out a plea um, to, because this is a juvenile. He doesn't have the resources to flee the country or flee the state. Um, so if he's being harbored, he's being harbored by his family, friend, or relative. And we encourage him again 
Um, we were glad that this did not result in a serious injury or loss of life, but we do want to resolve this issue and bring it to conclusion. And Sheriff Roundtree says and is pleading for those in the Josie community that do know the shooter to please turn him in. It's important information there from our sheriff. Thank you, Craig, for that. Nick Veland joining us now live from the Josie campus. And Nick, what are parents saying about how law enforcement handled that situation on campus today? Yeah, Richard, with any high-stress situation, emotions are going to be high, especially when loved ones' lives are on the line. Some parents we talked to today said it was a very chaotic scene. Sheriff Richard Roundtree says everyone followed protocol, and it wasn't. But parents still felt like more could have been done with clear communication to where to pick up their kids and ensuring safe pickups during these evacuations. When parents were finally able to pick up their student, they were relieved to see their loved one a day on a day that no one will ever forget. Terrified, scared. Oh, my mama, I'm ready to go. That was my mindset. I was like, I gotta get out of here, like, right now. And then it was like, if your kids come out and, you know, they can come out without permission, it was like, they're getting suspended, you know? So I'm like, oh, well, I have to take that suspension. You know, I'm just, I, I want to make sure she's safe. The whole time I'm crying, I was distraught. But after seeing him, I was relieved. We laughed, we smiled, checked him for any injuries, scrapes. Because my niece did fall. She hurt herself as well trying to get out. And those I talked to said that their child may not feel comfortable going back to school in the next couple of days. And the superintendent just announced again that school will be canceled here at Josie High School and Murphy Middle School for Thursday and Friday. No doubt it was intense. Anyone who's been through active shooters uh, training knows how intense it can be to be on the other end of that gun as those officers come through. So I'm sure those students saw and heard a lot today. But, Nick, thanks for the update there from Josie. And tonight we're digging deeper into some other violent incidents at the school. Will Rio here in the studio. So, Will, what have you learned? Well, this isn't the first time that the spotlight has been on Josie High School. This shooting is a reminder of what happened back on September 17th of last year in the middle of football season. Josie High was having their homecoming celebration over the weekend that many of you may have been at. There were huge crowds at the event when two people were injured on in a shooting on school grounds. A 19-year-old and an 18-year-old were arrested later that month for that shooting. Now, we reached out to the FBI in Atlanta today and you may be surprised to find out that the FBI does not track school violence data. We also found that there are no federal laws or requirements that exist for K-12 through schools to report crime in schools, according to the National School Safety and Security Services. Now, there's, that clear, there's the Cleary Act, but that's only for colleges and universities. Now, today the I-Team tracked down national data and local data just for you. The National Center for Education Statistics shows that shootings at every school, from elementary to middle to high school, like we saw today, have increased from 2001 to 2022. The latest data we have from Josie shows that there were at least 10 different incidents that we have just from Josie High School. That was anything from stun guns being found, threats being airdropped, and now weapons being used on campus. You can see those in red that were just highlighted. Now, the numbers from the Richmond County School System in 2021 and 2022, there were more than 1,600 instances of fighting, more than 2,700 cases of disorderly conduct, 25 knives located, and 60 other weapons. Now, we have reached out to the GBI and the Georgia Department of Education to see if school districts have to report this violence to the state. The GBI says that violence would be reported by school police if they're a reporting agency. Now we're working to find out if they are or not. Okay, thanks, Will. Important data to track down. Augusta Mayor Garnett Johnson also speaking out on what he calls an increase in youth violence in Augusta. Johnson says last week he visited with a family grieving their 15-year-old son instead of the child enjoying the first week of school, parents are planning his funeral. Johnson says now, just a week later, there's a school shooting. Johnson says he is saddened by the increased violence in our community. He says, as mayor, he does not have jurisdiction over law enforcement or the courts, but he can work to strengthen programming initiatives for the youth. Johnson says we need to create safe havens for our children, including expanding after school and summer programming offered by our recreation centers. Johnson calling for volunteers who will roll up their sleeves and help.
Meanwhile, our I-team has been digging deeper into the number of Richmond County school resource officers. And the I-team's Meredith Anderson found they could have more officers in your child's school than they've ever had before. We know an armed school resource officer was already on Josie's campus when today's shooting happened. The sheriff says others quickly arrived on scene. That could be because Richmond County Schools has the most school resource officers this year than it has in a while. Now take a look. We found that number has jumped from 34 district-wide to 43 in just five years. Now, we are still waiting on numbers from the start of the school year, but we did hear the superintendent say today there's an armed officer in every school, and there are 51 schools in the district, so we can assume that number jumped again this year. It is also important to note a new Georgia law just went into effect last month. It is called the Safe School Act. It requires every public school in the entire state to have its students complete an active shooter drill by October 1st of every school year. So that deadline for this school year is coming up pretty quickly. Parents can have their kids opt out if they want. I asked today if students at Josie had completed theirs yet, but I had not heard back. However, Sheriff Richard Roundtree says his deputies and school resource officers just completed their drill not too long ago. I think that was initially uh, important that we just went through this a couple of months ago um, with everybody knowing their roles and knowing exactly um, how to take action because um, this could have been a lot more tragic than it is. Uh, we hate that it shouldn't happen at, at all, but um, we're extremely grateful that it didn't result in loss of life. South Carolina law requires public schools conduct at least two active shooter drills each year, one per semester. New York requires the most of any state, making schools do lockdown drills four times every single school year. All right, thank you for that, Meredith. We did have a little bit of a... Well, believe it or not, overgrown grass is the top complaint facing Augusta city leaders these days, and the city has a new plan to tackle a growing problem. When News 12 at 6 o'clock continues. Call. All night. Grass trimming, scraps, piles of weeds, that's the number one complaint, along with that uncut grass. That's what Augusta neighbors are complaining about. No one wants to look at overgrown grass or broken sidewalks. The question, though, is who's really in charge of fixing these problems? Hallie Turner, live for us on 8th Street, to show us what neighbors over there are concerned about. Yeah, Richard, as you can see, it's a lot of ungrown grass over here. It's overgrown, excuse me, not ungrown, overgrown grass. The sidewalks are cracked back here, and they're just so frustrated. They've been this way for years. But commissioners are on a mission to get rid of the nickname Disgusta and bring back the Garden City. I love my town, and I'm proud of this, and I've had enough. Enough of overgrown grass, tall weeds, broken sidewalks, and more. This is it, folks. Uncut grass. Cracked sidewalks, asphalt falling apart. You ride down half the roads in the oldest part of the town and we've got sinkholes. Tony Stevens has lived in Augusta his entire life and he says things have only changed for the worse. I've only saw things get worse around here in the last several years. Uh, I mean, gee, is this, they just raised my taxes $700 this year on my property taxes. Is this what I'm getting for my tax dollar? Commissioners in the mayor's office have been fighting this issue for years. Earlier this year, the mayor told News 12 he was getting tired of trying to figure out which department to call for help. And so is Stevens. It sure ain't making Richmond County a better place because, I mean, all I see is an increase in crime, infrastructure falling apart more rapidly by the day, and we're at a breaking point. The change is coming. Tuesday night, commissioners scheduled a work session to bring everything green back under one roof. Now, just to kind of make it clear, I'm standing on what used to be a sidewalk. Behind me is the end point of that sidewalk because you can no longer see it because of the grass. But within the next 30 days, every department that plays a role in upkeep for right of way properties, vacant lots, tree maintenance, 311, and more will come together to discuss the needs, how they will budget this, and schedule the maintenance upkeep instead of just doing this on a reactive schedule. Looks like a lawnmower is way overdue over where you are. Allie, thanks for the update there. The storms are gone for now, but for a few, the aftermath of downed trees are giving some homeowners a headache. So if a tree falls on a road, whose problem is it? The city, the counties, the homeowners? As Audrey Dickerber found, the answer is not clear-cut.
Storms lately have caused lots of damage to homes and roads, and depending on where you are, determines the help you get. For people living behind this sign, trying to get help has been difficult. Every time it storms, scared to death. We don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know if we're gonna be left with our power. We don't know if a tree's gonna fall down in the middle of the road again. We don't know if it's gonna fall on the house. It's just a bad area, bad situation all the way around. The road is full of overgrown plants and trees some that have even fallen during storms. When driving down the road, you can't see cars coming from the other direction. I worry every day um, because my daughter comes back and forth, my son comes to visit, and I worry about a tree falling on top of one of the vehicles, um, falling in front of them, they can't get out, they can't get down there. And this isn't the first time this has happened. Over the years, this happened quite a lot. Multiple phone calls and emails, but still no help. The city and the county that I was calling back and forth, each one was giving responsibility to the other one about who, who was supposed to do everything. I reached out to County Public Works and was told to call Aiken County Government Center, who then sent me to code enforcement. I am still waiting to hear back. Atisha received an email from Public Works saying the road is state maintained, even though this sign is on the road. Just need to be able to get home at night I need to be able to worry about getting through here during the daytime and not having a tree fall on top of my car. So for now, the mess is left for them to clean up. This is what we're stuck with. This is what we're working with. Maybe somebody will be able to help us. She says she is just worried about her family's safety and hopes someone takes responsibility in order to consistently maintain the area. Audrey Dickerber, on your side. All right, thank you for that, Audrey. We are looking at storm chances to remain very low over the next several days and finally getting some relief from the humidity Thursday and Friday. Now look at that full 70 forecast just after break. Your safety 